Take a second and remember the last time you were on the road and running late. Did you wonder just how much faster would you need to drive to save some precious time? Let's say you are on a 60 mile trip and the speed limit is 60 miles per hour. At that speed, you would reach your destination in exactly one hour. But what if you need to get there in just 45 minutes? How much faster do you need to drive? Would you need 15 miles per hour over the limit? Or maybe 30 over the limit? Or something in between? Take a guess. No, literally. Go ahead and really take a guess. I'll wait. Comment your first intuition below. No calculations allowed, by the way. And also, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe and press that bell icon while you're at it. Okay, so I asked this question to my family and friends, and I mostly heard one of two responses. One group thought that if I go double the speed limit, I save half the time. So if I were to go 120 miles per hour, I would reach there in 30 minutes. I can now scale this down. So for every two miles per hour over the limit, I end up saving one minute. Hence, to save 15 minutes, I need to go 30 over. The other group was even more linear, like one to one linear. So they said 60 miles at 60 miles per hour gets me there in one hour. So I must go 15 over to make up 15 minutes. Both groups had good instincts and there is part truth to some of these claims, but they are certainly not entirely accurate. Most people have a linear perception of the relationship between speed and time, but it's not really that simple. Let's break it down. Say we have to cover a distance D and the speed limit is V0. So driving at the limit, it will take us a time of D over V0. Let's call this time T0. This is the basic relationship between distance, speed, and time. Let's not worry about the time it takes for us to speed up or to break down or any of those real world non-idealities. We assume that we go at a constant speed throughout. But what happens when we tweak the speed? Now, if I was to go delta V over, so my speed is now V naught plus delta V, I would end up reaching my destination in D divided by V naught plus delta V, hence saving me some time, which I'm gonna call delta T. Already at this stage, we can see the relationship between delta T and delta V is anything but linear. It does have the right intuitive dependency though. If I go faster, making delta V higher, that does make delta T larger as well, saving me more time, obviously. Let's apply this to our opening example. The relationship between time saved and speed increase looks like this. Certainly not a linear line. I can read off here. To save 15 minutes on a 60 mile trip, you need to drive 20 miles per hour faster than the speed limit, not 15 and not 30. Let's dig further into this. To make our analysis more universal, let's talk ratios. So fraction of time saved relative to T naught and speeding as a fraction of the speed limit. I can now combine delta T over T naught as this relative time saved and delta V over V naught as the relative amount of speeding, which gives us a universal relationship between them, independent of the actual distance D or the speed limit V naught. This looks like Y equals X over one plus X. This is absolutely fascinating. Here is how this looks like graphically. It has the same shape, but now the numbers represent fractional changes or percentages. So to take off 15 minutes of a trip that would otherwise have taken an hour is saving 25% time, which means I need to go 30% over the limit, not 25%, not 50%. So where did our intuition go wrong? What was partly correct about it? My friends who said, if I go double the speed limit, I reach in half the time are absolutely correct about that. The flaw is that they linearly interpolate the scaling for all other speeds. Here is that linear flawed line. 
it matches the true answer at two points, when delta V over V0 is zero, and when delta V over V0 is one. The good thing is that this linear scaling with the double speed half time relationship is an underestimate of how much time you would save. Physics and math save you more time than you think. And what about the folks who went for the linear one to one relationship? Delta T over T naught equals delta V over V naught. You folks tend to overestimate the benefits of speeding. But there is a sense in which you are right too, at least approximately. You see, when you speed only a little, relatively speaking of course, the two lines seem to match. And one can see this very clearly using a binomial expansion. When delta V over V naught is small, we can expand one plus delta V over V naught to the minus one as one minus delta V over V naught plus something order delta V square which then gives us the following expression for delta t over t naught. And as I said, if we are not speeding too much compared to the speed limit, we can drop the quadratic term and this gives us the one-to-one -one scaling. Another nice thing about this universal speeding relationship is that it can be inverted to get delta v over v naught as a function of delta t over t naught, which looks like this. The initial part of the plot follows what we discussed earlier when we were only adventurous enough to think about going at most double the speed limit. But this non-linearity becomes even more severe as you want to save more and more time. If you want to save 80% time, you need to be going 400% of the speed limit. That means in our opening example, to save 48 minutes, you need to be going at 240 miles per hour. And if you want to save almost all of your time, you need to be going infinitely fast. This equation doesn't just apply to speeding. It's a universal reminder of diminishing returns. The harder you push to save time, the less efficient each extra effort becomes. It's like running a marathon. The faster you try to go, the more energy, discipline, and more training it takes to gain just a few seconds. Speed time and intuition. Three things we deal with every day, but they don't always place was simply with each other. Physics doesn't just make life nonlinear, it also makes it humbling. The next time you're rushing somewhere, think about this. Saving time is like squeezing toothpaste out of the tube. It's easy to get a little, but the more you try, the harder it becomes. So maybe Instead of trying to beat the clock, leave five minutes earlier. Or better yet, let the clock win. Because you might save more than just time. In the end, it's not about how fast you get there. It's about making most of the journey. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.